I feel like one thing that realists cannot deny about the beginning of Boruto up to this fourth episode is the fact that at the very least for the first handful or so episodes of original Naruto I think this is doing a better job at establishing these characters and I've been saying this time and time again but I gotta stress it especially after watching episode four it's doing a phenomenal job of not only grouping all these characters together really showing a true bond with these characters of them just really doing a lot of little different things at school and whatnot but it's also just really pushing forth these characters and who they are as you know solo characters not just having like maybe one or two stand out because OG Naruto like we had you know I want to say a handful or so of episodes and then we got straight into the Zabuza stuff which Zabuza stuff classic can't touch that won't talk shit about that one but what I'm saying is I really wish original Naruto had at least a few of these type of episodes in the beginning besides you know we had like one or two I really wish it would have had more of these type of episodes of what Boruto was doing because it's doing a great job it really is doing a great job of setting things up and showing these kids slowly develop but also already their established skills that they have coming into Boruto because this episode right here seeing the teamwork seeing everybody working together seeing everybody's little skills that they have and whatnot was excellent I really enjoyed and appreciated that was it the greatest episode of all time no I'd argue I preferred it and I thought it was better at you know doing characterization than last week's episode so that's a good thing there although last week's episode wasn't bad either but nevertheless I felt as though it was a genuine good episode episode now one of my favorite moments honestly was just seeing Konohamaru in this episode for starters him looking like Sage Mo Naruto summoning that toad and standing up top I was like that type I really like seeing Konohamaru because you know we get little inklings here or there of Konohamaru but in this next generation you know in the movie and every little bit that we've had thus far regarding the story we haven't seen Konohamaru do too much so to see him there with the frog I'm like man I want to see more Konohamaru this episode made me think yo especially the fact that if, of course if you know what happens in the movie and whatnot what Konohamaru's ultimate relationship becomes with Boruto and a couple of other kids it's like I want to see more Konohamaru I want to see him do more savage things and this episode it was like we see him you know summoning a giant toad which i saw some people complaining that they were like why didn't he adopt the gorilla transformation you know having the summoning of the gorilla instead to honor you know sarutobi but honestly if you think about it he's more so looked up to naruto more than anybody like you know he honored his grandfather and he loved his grandfather but at the end of the day he always wanted to be like naruto so i feel as though it more so fits him to get that because that's what he wanted to be he wanted to be like his big brother you know naruto nijan so i was like yeah, that, that works. I mean, it would have been cool to see what a gorilla and hopefully one of these other kids can summon something like that. That'd be dope as shit. But I think the Toad is fine with Konohamaru and this episode, he really rocked it very nicely. Now, with that being said, you know, there was a couple of slow parts of the episode. I wasn't completely through the moon for the episode when Sarada and Boruto are arguing over the fucking Yaki Soba bun. I'm like, I'm 26 years old watching a couple of like fucking 11 year olds argue over a sandwich. What What is life right now? But it led into something cool, which was that little competition to capture the flag thing which it outdid my expectations honestly i have very low expectations for this because i was like capture the flag okay doesn't really sound all that hype but to see all the characters working together again it was kind of cool shino if you see my spoiler video from yesterday talking about shino then you know right now i'm not too fond of shino in this next gen and even when konohamaru it almost made me feel awkward as a viewer watching this little conversation between Shino and Konohamaru and when Konohamaru was talking about Shino's generation and like yo yeah your generation was the most competitive you had Naruto you know Shikamaru Sasuke Sakura everybody was just really trying to be number one and I'm looking at like I feel so embarrassed in a way for Shino because if Konohamaru only knew because he was around but he wasn't completely in the picture especially from the start if you only knew how irrelevant Shino was to the conversation of being the best and being number one out of the you know Konoha 11 I was like oh this is so awkward like and, and Shino just there like yeah yeah you know we all really try motherfucker you was irrelevant and even here to your own students they fucking joking on you clowning on you i'm like chino i feel so bad and i want him to have his moment but things is not looking good for chino and this episode yet again i was like i was genuinely embarrassed and feeling awkward for the character 
That says a lot about Shino and the, the next generation. Hopefully he can turn things around, but as of episode 4, mm, mm Now, something really interesting that this episode brought forth is, because we've had this mystery up until this point from episode 1 till now, regarding what the fuck is going on with people falling into the pravity and seeing that black chakra thing, that dark chakra, and then we saw, like, that beast yet again in this episode when Boruto went to summon the snake, which is so fitting, and, and that's why I really liked Konohamaru summoning the, you know, the toad, because it fits well with who he wants to be and who he looks up to. And if you know a little bit about Boruto, especially later on in the story and the movie content and whatnot, then you know who he looks up to. So for him to summon the snake, I was like, that is perfect. Now, granted, it wasn't, you know, working very well. And you got to think for a second. If he didn't have what's going on right now, this mystery, could Boruto have still summoned the snake? Because even Konohamaru was kind of puzzled, like, with that amount of chakra, he shouldn't have been able to summon shit. Like, if that cursed thing or whatever the hell is going on with him right now wasn't there, he might not have been able to do that. So they might have actually really got fucked in the end. And speaking of Konohamaru again, because I feel as though for me, again, my favorite character of the episode was Konohamaru. When he came in with the Rasengan looking like Naruto, like it felt like it was just a straight up homage and also flash forward to who Konohamaru wanted to be from way back then. He is now. When he came with the fucking Rasengan and just bodied that snake, I was like, Konohamaru, this is what I want to see from the next gen of the people from the old gen that didn't really get to shine that much i mean he had a couple of moments when he did that ass pool of taking out the pain is like how's the little kid with a rasengan taking out one of the pain what the fuck is going on but he you know he, he didn't really have that much this one I'm like you can be a sensei now you can be the true sensei because she know she know ain't doing shit she don't need to get back there and just stay there quiet it needs to be konohamaru and this episode he rocked it the toad the, the rasengan to take out the snake and then sitting back wondering what, what, what was up with that with Boruto really building up the suspense and the mystery of this, you know, dark chakra that's just fucking everyone up and making everybody go a little bit bonkers. But then, because I said this a couple episodes ago and it did make sense, it seemed as though, I believe it was episode one if I'm not mistaken, when Denki got possessed or, you know, taken over by that chakra thingy, it looked like a snake bite. It looked like a snake came out and bit him. Then the end of the episode, we get that mysterious character, which, spoiler alert if you don't know who he is, he's in the opening, he's been in the Gaiden manga, he's been in the movie he's been in pretty much everything that's borrowed to related thus far Mitsuki, the character shows up and if you know his origins then you know he's somewhat related to some sort of snake shit so it's really starting to look like to me anyway that this is Orochimaru's doing whatever is going on right now with this chakra thing that's taking control and it's kind of seemingly connected to Boruto and possibly his eye Maybe Orochimaru had something to do with it. I don't know how. When would he have gotten his hands on Boruto himself? Because potentially it could be that whatever is right now happening, because it always happens nearby Boruto, if I'm not mistaken, or when somebody interacts with Boruto, maybe there's a huge possibility that it's coming from within him, whatever is inside of him. And if it's Orochimaru and Naruto finds out, bro, you fucking with my son? Like, you already fucked with my best friend for years and kind of made him go a little bit loopy with Sasuke. Now you fucking with my son? Things are gonna be interesting, so... Really seems as though it's leaning that way, for me anyway, regarding it being Orochimaru that's behind this black chakra monster that's making people go nuts and shit like that. So, really interesting stuff there. Overall, as a whole episode, I felt it was a good episode. I want to say 7 to a 7.5, really establishing the characters again. Seeing Iwabe, you know, just a big turnaround. For me, I think Iwabe should have still been a little bit more, not necessarily of an asshole, but I think he should still be more of, like, the Vegeta. I think he's a little too gung-ho for this complete turnaround thing. It's like, I would have liked him to be more like a Vegeta, whereas like yeah i'm gonna help out yeah i'm gonna be more of a team player but i'm still an asshole and i'm still quiet i would have liked that even though it's a trope in anime but it's like it seems a little bit too unrealistic for this kid that's been left back a million times he has one encounter with boruto and he's like i'm ready to be a part of the team lads come on then also we got a little bit more into that purple haired girl forgive me i cannot remember her name i'm sorry and it's making me think maybe there's a possibility that she'll be relevant for more than just these episodes because a lot of people are saying it seems as though maybe she's just being hyped up for these academy episodes and then down the road she's going to be completely forgotten especially the fact that her denki and iwabe haven't been mentioned in the manga or the movie they seem as though they're anime onlys it could very well be that because of the stuff we've seen the content we've seen thus far maybe they just haven't been around maybe that's how they're going to work in the story to me it's just that they weren't thought up yet and they've only been thought up for the anime and maybe the manga will incorporate them like hey we haven't seen iwabe and and them in a while because they've been on missions something like that 
that would work and that would kind of make sense. Although, why wasn't they in the tuning exams? Maybe, I don't know, they, they're going to do a big catastrophe and have motherfuckers die. That'd be sick, right? Just have, you know, people get killed or something. Or maybe it could be that they could reveal later on, like, Wabi really is Kawaki and he left with the purple-haired bitch and Denki and, you know, he came back and fucked shit up. That would make sense. But it was nice to see also the purple-haired girl, even though she's really nervous. I'm imagining she's going to have some cool techniques. I mean, she was throwing the shuriken like nothing. I was like... Okay, there's, there's a possibility for growth for her, and I'm hoping that they don't just leave these characters in the dust in this part of the story, and it's like, oh, later on, who, who are they again? Like, if you're going to build them up now, keep them around for the remainder of the story and make them relevant, and somehow, one way or another, incorporate them into the manga, and if they're going to redo Boral till the movie, maybe they can make that the movie stuff isn't even canon to begin with, and they're going to change things around, so to speak, and we'll see some matches with Iwabe and the purple-haired chick and even Denki. And with all that being said, again, good episode. Kind of curious what you guys think about this, though. Do you truly believe it's potentially Orochimaru did something to Boruto, which in return is making people go nuts and get, you know, this fall into insanity and getting crazy or whatnot, or could it have something totally different to do with things, and also what do you think about Mitsuki showing up at the end, really liking where this is going, I'm imagining we only have a few more episodes of, you know, the Academy stuff, but for what we're getting, it's good build up, and I think, you know, the people that are saying, it's boring or whatever, I don't want things to just fly by and just be ass pulls and shit, I'd rather have this nice slow build up, which is still entertaining to me anyway, and then we get to the good stuff where everything is just absolutely insane and war and all that good violence that we all love occasionally like we'll, we'll get that let's get the good build up also what do you think about konohamaru in this episode him summoning the toad and the fucking rasengan i was like yes konohamaru you do your thing and how do you feel about shino 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 bro please do something become relevant i'm begging you but that's all i have for this one thanks for watching hope you enjoyed if you liked anything i had to say or enjoyed the video drop me a like i'd greatly appreciate it and if you want more from me make sure to subscribe follow me on twitter instagram and stalk my facebook to get more when the video ends i'm fun world and as always people have an awesome day